In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a dashboard. Dashboards are another way we present statistics to an audience. In this case, a dashboard is something that a viewer can interact with and see data, in this case, distribution of scores by courses. It's hypothetical data, but it mimics the way we use dashboards. Your task will be to follow along in the exact same steps and make your own dashboard uh, identical to this one here, um, possibly with some stylistic changes. But my goal here is to introduce you to the idea of a dashboard and help you put together your first dashboard uh, so that you can later explore these on your own. The goal being to expose you to the idea of dashboards and how what they do and how they work. You'll start by uh, making a copy of the data. I've clicked on that link and I will make a copy of the data. You'll need your own copy of the data to uh, set up your dashboard. Um, I would recommend altering the name. I'm going to just so I can tell which what is what. I'm going to give it my own uh, unique name, if it will, by adding my letters to the front. You can do what you wish, but that'll help me a little bit later on. I'm now done. That's my data. That's, that's uh, you'll be in your account. That'll be necessary for you to proceed to the next step. Your next step will be to open up a new tab. Uh, I'm going to use Command or Control T to get a tab and go to Data Studio, and I'll be sure to include a link to this, .google.com. Press Enter. Yours will probably be blank, and you may get some initial startup help messages. But once I get to Data Studio, and again, I should be logged into my college account, as you see I am here. Make, make sure you're staying in your college account. The data is only accessible through that account. I'm going to click on Create and go down to the second item, Data Source. I've got to tell Data Studio where my data is going to come from. There's connectors. I want the Google Sheets connector because my data is in Google Sheets, as you can see up there on the second tab. I click on Google Sheets, and you'll see Sheets here. That's why I gave it a unique name. I wanted to make sure I could tell which one I'm trying to connect to and it's this one. I then say connect. This connects the dashboard that I'll be building, the data for the dashboard, back to the Google Sheets document. Any changes I make in Google Sheets will be reflected in the dashboard. Now I do have a little bit of work I want to do here. The current score, I want that to calculate by the average. And there you can see the statistical underpinnings of a dashboard. We have average, we have count, count distinct, we'll set aside that, that's a special use, the minimum, the maximum, the medium, the standard deviation, and the variance, which is just the square of the standard deviation, along with the sum. We want the average of the score, that's typically what we would want to report in an educational dashboard. And we also have at the bottom the number of records. I'm going to add a, uh, add a, I clicked on add up there. Uh, let me do that again more slowly. So you can see it, see add a field? I'm going to click on add a field, and I'm going to add a field. And these are similar to the functions that you've already met in spreadsheets, but unfortunately the functions aren't exactly the same, but they work in the same way. They do not start with an equals, though. No equal sign at the front. You just start typing the formula. The formula I'm going to use is going to figure out what decade a score is in. And where in spreadsheets, I'd use a function called the integer function, INT. Here, the function is called floor. There is a guide for looking up functions, but the goal today isn't to teach you all the functions. The current score, that's that column from the 
spreadsheet that we had that has the scores in it. And I'm going to divide that by 10. Now this looks strange because I'm multiplying by 10 and dividing by 10. But when I divide by 10, it's going to move the decimal to the left. Then it's going to take it as an integer and then multiply it back up by 10. It's a common trick we use to create a distribution of data. And that's what I'm going to be doing, creating a data distribution. The green check at the bottom tells me that the formula syntax is valid. So I'll go ahead and save my formula. Oh, I should give it a better name uh, of some sort. Back up here. Let me call this the score decade, the decade in which the score comes. Give your field a name that will tell you what your field is doing. So I want a name that has some meaning. Don't mess with the field ID. That's generated automatically. Now I'll go ahead and save this. That's a little and you will see it will appear eventually over here in the available fields list um, a little later we'll we'll get that that will show up on the uh when i go to close this sorry it'll show up right here i have to close that the, anytime i want to edit that i just click on this little gray square that says fx and i can edit it and then i close it uh, and so i can see that this is a calculated field and for this one, I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'll just leave it a number. I won't do anything in particular with it at this point. That sets up the fields I want, including a calculated field that uh, is using some of the functions from spreadsheets that will help us build a histogram on our chart, on our dashboard later, a histogram chart. Well, we're going to go ahead and create a report from our data. That's the da what they call the dashboards. The dashboards are referred to as a report. Probably want to start by giving my report some kind of name. I'll go ahead and data activity six. You probably in real life would want something more meaningful. But you can see it's already set up for me a uh, 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 table here. Writing's a little small, but it's already pulling in the data source that I've got. There's all the fields that are available to me. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. It's small, but uh, those are the campuses. I actually am going to go ahead and click. Uh, I've scrolled down here. I'm on data. I'm scrolling down. You can do the same thing. Oh, you know, watch the video. Pause. Go do it. Try it. Come back. Watch the video. I don't want campus there. I'm going to go ahead and click on campus, and I'm going to just choose course. Uh, I'll add course, and then I'll click on add dimension, and I'm going to add section here just for fun. But I'm going to then click, see this drill down? I'm going to make it a drill down table. What that'll do is it'll show the course here, but if I want to see the section, I can click on this down arrow, and then I'll see the sections. Next, I'm going to keep scrolling down the metric uh, I actually want to see what the scores are, so I'm going to go to current score right there and change the metric to the current score. The average, that's right. So now it's showing me the average. And I keep scrolling down. That's way too many rows per page. 100, that's too clumsy. I'm going to go back to a much smaller number, just about 20. They'll all fit nicely in my table if I extend it down just a little bit. See, I'm stretching it. There's 20 rows. I want that. I usually do want a summary row. I might need to stretch it a bit more. I'm scrolling and stretching. There we go. Because that'll give me the overall average for everything. And I'm going to go right here in the middle and double click that. To, I double click this blue line in the middle to kind of space the columns better. Uh, my sorting, the sort order that you probably will want is course, ascending. That's makes more sense for most uh, people. And for secondary sort, I'll sort by section. Uh, that'll be my uh, section secondary sort. I, I need a different, that's a different chart field. I got current score. I'll leave it there. It's this way. Uh, that's, that'll come back in a moment. I was going to try to sort by section here, but uh, it's not going to let me do that in this particular case because it's not uh, currently showing. I'll tell it to reset here at the top whenever I want to put it back to where it was. But now it's in course order with the averages, and it's a drill-down table. Um, 
That's a good start. It's kind of plain looking. But I can change that. I'll go over to more. Theme and layout. And I can change to a whole different theme if I want to. Let me just click on this theme. There's a new theme all set up. There's other themes. It's In this sense, it's a little bit like a presentation. The theme, there are themes you can choose. It works something like a presentation that way. That gets me a table of data, but it doesn't get me the histogram that I wanted to display. So to add a chart, and here the word chart also includes tables. You can add tables, you can add charts. So they're using the word add a chart rather loosely. And what I want to do is I want to just add a column chart right there. In this sense, it's like working on a spreadsheet. So there's my column chart. It's not set up right yet. I'll make it a little bigger. It's not yet set up right because what I really want for the dimension is the score decades. There's the score decades. I'll have to sort out the sort order in a mo moment. And the metric I want is the number of records at that particular score. I'm going to scroll down. The sort order, I don't want it in the uh, record count order. I want it in the score decade order. That's the order I want from 100 on down. One other thing I'll have to do, uh, I've only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 columns showing, so I'll have to fix that in a moment. Cross filtering is set, chain sorting is set, I want those on. And I'll go over to style for just a minute, scroll up. I'm looking for the number of bars. I need to add at least one more bar to get an 11th column in because there's some scores that are below 10. So this is a histogram. These are the number of, uh, in this case, of students who are in each decade. These are students with 100%. These are in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s. So I can see a distribution of student scores across all courses. I'm going to show you one more feature of, of a dashboard that can be useful. I'm going to add a control. A control, here it's a fixed size list, lets me control, it's a control panel for the dashboard. Now when it comes in, it will come in with the wrong control field. What I'm going to do is set that to be the campus. This will let me look campus by campus. I might need to stretch it out to make sure everybody's showing. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, for the metric, let's put in the current score, make sure it's an average, and then scroll down. I'm going to order not by the metric. I'm going to order by the dimension. That makes more sense to people in ascending order, not descending order. That puts the campuses in alphabetical order. What this does is it allows me to, for example, look at only the distribution of scores in online courses or reset my panel and show all campuses. Um, and so there's a control panel. One other chart I'm going to add doesn't look at all like a chart. I'm going to add a scorecard right here just to show me the total number of records. It's going to come in as a record count. If not, I can change the metric to be a rec record count. It shows me the number of scores. That's what that is. 1,807 scores. Dashboards are really good at dealing with large amounts of data. So I've now got a table. I've got a histogram that shows me the score distribution. It's theoretical, but it's, you know, we can play with it and see that the different courses have different score. You click on the course, it changes the dashboard. That's a score distribution in theory. And then, uh, the data in here is... Uh, pseudo data as we call it but this is 21 scores for that particular section and so this provides information that could be used by somebody who is uh, interested in determining how the students are doing at their particular institution these are called dashboards and they're a, a big part of the world of data analysis and statistical analysis today they often use very basic statistics histograms averages they aren't necessarily really fancy but a large number of statisticians now work in the area of building dashboards. Corporations use dashboards. Uh, uh, schools use dashboards. Institutions, governments, dashboards 
are used by a wide range of fields, public health. There's dashboards that tell you the, you know, the rate of infectious diseases or uh, influenza-like illnesses. There's dashboards across every single field. In fact, you may more often see dashboards than you will actually sit and watch some presentation, some slide presentation online. And dashboards are usually built by people working in data analysis, data mining, who have a strong background in statistics. Some would involve some more advanced statistical calculations, but most of them actually involve fairly basic ones. You can always reset your dashboard. Your goal is to just do what I did, take, this, take these steps, put together just to get you introduced to a dashboard. Um, when you're done with your dashboard, you can pick your own theme. You might want to pick some other theme and layout. You can sit here and play with them. Your, yours. The style really is a style. So you decide, you know, I, I want some different background. Well, scroll down, down, down. That's a legend. You can change the background if you want to uh, on it to something else that you think is a better background, maybe. Uh, whatever you want to do, you can certainly do. And then just take a screenshot of your dashboard and submit your dashboard. Goal here is just to introduce you to dashboards. Um, you can I play with them forever, tweaking them. But they are a, a, uh, an area that's uh, increasingly important in data analysis, data mining. This is what the dashboard looks like uh, in a view that you'd send to a user. What you would do is to send it to somebody, you can change your link access and send, you know, add people who are supposed to see the dashboard and what ability they have to see the dashboard. And then you can send them that link that you'd get uh, after you've authorized certain people to see your dashboard. You can then set a link and uh, copy that link and send them it, and then they can work on the dashboard. And the statistician side of it is to simply build the dashboard. You can see our, we've got 20. These things, there's actually 79 courses being listed here uh, just to mimic how a real dashboard would would probably behave. The numbers are, are, uh, are hypothetical, theoretical, pseudo numbers just generated to give you something to play with. But they can deal with tens of thousands of records in real life. This is just a, uh, if you will, it's a toy dashboard. But they can yield tens of thousands of uh, records, even millions of records in some cases. A company like Amazon has dashboards tracking tens of millions of different uh, items and being uh, run through their system. And so it's a, they're, they're another part of statistics. So see if you can make one of these, You're the same one, uh, feel free to rearrange it, but see if you can build one with the table and the, his, you know, the histogram and the control panel. Uh, and send me a screenshot. Just take a screenshot of it and send it to me. Uh, this, this activity will undoubtedly have to be done on a computer. Uh, but if you have questions, do let me know. This is another big part of the modern world of statistics. Well, I thank you for watching, and uh, let me know when you run into problems or have questions, please.